So I'm going to give the answer to this. And what I like about a hard hitting question like this is that some of our listeners will be happy about it, about that answer, and some will be upset, potentially including this person who sent this this question in. Hello and welcome to Shop Talk, where we talk everything Scottsdale Police, answer your questions and bring you updates from around the department. Now, here are your hosts, Chief Jeff Walther and special guest host, Commander Chris Coffey. Happy 2022, everybody. This is uh, Chief Jeff Walther, Scottsdale Police Department. Uh, excited to begin the new year in episode number five of Shop Talk. Uh, uh, glad everybody's listening again. And uh, normally this is where I, I would introduce my my famous sidekick, uh, Sergeant Kevin Kwan, but he is out no, he doesn't have COVID, but he is out today. And so I have a, uh, a special guest co-host and Commander Chris Coffey. Very and, excited. Yeah, many in the community know uh, uh, Commander Coffey from his time as the, the downtown district commander. And he's moved to our, our uh, professional standards division and is in charge of the whole enchilada, including this show. <laughs> Chief, like, I'm uh, very excited. <laughs> Uh, to be here, especially because who our guest is uh, and uh, my connection uh, with our guest, which we'll get to later. But uh, I just uh, thank you for allowing me to be the guest host. You, you bet. I feel yeah, bad. No, Usually I, I make fun of Kevin throughout the show because uh, he's uh, he's a bit of a Star Wars nerd and he likes to insert Star Wars uh, trivia inside the, inside of our programs. But uh, I swear I'm going to take it easy on you today. We have a great show, a lot of great questions uh, from our from our from our listeners, and then we have an, a great guest and a great partner in uh, Dr. Michael Golding uh, from the Thunderbirds, uh, who is the chairman for the 2022 uh, Waste Management Phoenix Open, and we're going to get to him and uh, ask him a lot of great questions and and uh, really talk about an amazing partnership over the last uh, uh, two and a half, almost three decades. So. So without further ado, let's let's just jump into the questions uh, right. that, that we've, you're, uh, you're that a Star we've Trek fan, too. So as I, I am a Star Trek fan. And <laughs> as Chief Picard would say or Captain Picard, engage. <laughs> that's our that's our rivalry between uh, Quan and I. Is, uh, he's so obsessed with, with Star Wars and I, I like Star Trek. So. All right. Well, let's uh, first uh, thank you to uh, all the community that sends in questions. Uh Please continue to send us uh, questions on uh, all of our social media platforms. And that's uh, whether it's Instagram, Twitter or Facebook, you know, at Scottsdale PD. But uh, let's start with the first question. Uh, with uh, New Year beginning, what can we expect from Scottsdale Police and what are some of the changes on the horizon? Wow. So we've had the last 13 months that I've been the chief, or if you recall, if our listeners recall, I became the chief um, in on December 1st of 2022, uh, 2020, so I was going to throw on 2021, <laughs> 2022, which year was it? It was 2020 uh, that I became the chief. And we set about uh, just making some tweaks and changes and and uh, and some, some real positive communication efforts uh, internal to the organization and uh, external to the organization. And so that's going to continue. We're kind of moving at a breakneck pace. Uh, and so 2022 is not going to be any different. We have a number of things. In fact, um, our guest next month for February is going to be Ivan Gilreath, who is the president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Scottsdale. And I think that leads into this question, which is what are some of the things we're going to do? And really um, working on expanding our partnership um, with the Boys and Girls Club uh, and even you know, bolstering our relationship in our schools with our school resource officers um, to really create, I think, some synergy with our youth. I think if you see, you know, how can law enforcement best impact Impact uh, our community. It's it's really with the youth, and so we're getting ready to roll out in the spring uh, a police a new police athletic league uh, within the boys and girls club. And we're gonna we want to work with the the uh, first with the Coronado Complex area to really start um, participating more. There's just so many things that we can do uh, with our youth. In fact, uh, down at the Barker branch, uh, we just played dodgeball. I had officers and cadets and, and professional staff playing uh, dodgeball with the teens down there. There's a connectivity 
the, uh, in that and those activities that you don't get um, just by one on one contact on the street or hey, if I show up at your school, well, let's have let's have some conversation. And so I think that there's a great opportunity for us to participate in a lot of the programs uh, through Barker Branch, through the Coronado Complex, and ultimately we'll expand that. But that's one of the things that we're really going to do. I have great people in this organization who can help um, talk about leadership, talk about service uh, to the community and, and really really uh, help to shape or give, provide some ideas for our youth to say, hey, you know, that's something I might want to get into. I might want to get into a service oriented field like law enforcement. It doesn't have to be uh, a police officer. We have so many wonderful jobs in the, in the organization, uh, but I think that there needs to be a connectivity, a greater connectivity, uh, not just in Scottsdale, but but nationally with our with our youth to give them a better understanding of the true nature of what services and what law enforcement is. So that's one of the big things on the horizon for us. A couple other things that we are likely going to roll out uh, in, in 2022, as long as it's, we, we get the funding. And if my boss is listening, shout out to uh, city manager Jim Thompson, because I know, boss, I'm going to mention this. I know <laughs> that it's going to make your final cut. Uh, but we're looking at, uh, at bringing on three sworn park rangers uh, to, to really give better coverage in the in our parks and preserve area. You know, we have an amazing, amazing preserve, uh, and it's, it'd, be, it'd be great to have more full-time dedicated uh, park rangers in that area as opposed to patrol officers who, who will go there when called upon or get a call for service. I like a little bit more dedicated law enforcement presence, kind of that, that can work the preserve area, that can work trailheads. Uh, the, tra- the trailheads, that can work the uh, green belt system and, and all of our amazing parks. So that's uh, for 2022, along with um, something that has really been in the news lately and uh, very kind of visionary in the thought process of the Scottsdale City Council and creating some or bolstering short term rental mm-hmm. um, laws and ordinances. And so we'll have come online very likely in the latter part of the year, a short term rental squad. Uh, sergeant for officers that are really dedicated to dealing with issues in short-term rentals, party nuisance parties related to short-term rentals, and really become the expert in short-term rentals. So those are just a, a few of the things uh, that we're, we're going to do. Uh, also, that always working on that increased connectivity between us and the public um, to make sure that we're communicating very regularly via all of our social media platforms. So you're seeing a lot of videos coming out from us. We post every day. Here's what we're doing. Come meet with us. Uh, so We'll have uh, you know a couple community engagement group meetings. So there's a lot going on in the organization, and those are just the external things that are going on. There's some internal things uh, that we're working on as well, just uh, for recruitment and retention that uh, that we're rolling out in this year as well. Busy, always. We are busy. Yeah, it's um, well. A lot of the talked about a lot of great things, and and that kind of leads into uh, the second question. The city recently adopted uh, a short-term rental and nuisance party ordinance, right, right. and uh, we made some changes uh, this year to to help our communities um, be good partners and really for short-term rental owners to be right, better right. better neighbors. And so, if you can talk a little bit about you know maybe the two to three. Uh, changes yeah, that were made. Super interesting phenomenon in short-term rentals uh, and, and that what we've seen in, in the dramatic, dramatic rise in calls for service for the police department related to short-term rentals, parties, nuisance parties. And so uh, the city council, uh, you know, put a great uh, working group together, short-term rental working group that really, uh, that was made up of, uh, of a couple of our council members and PD and code enforcement and city staff, assistant city managers, um, legal citizen, actual citizens and in, in citizen involvement, business involvement, and really put a comprehensive group together to, to really study the issue and the problem and came up with a couple uh, ordinance changes that I think are, are really important. One is, is that um, if there is an issue going on or if public safety police have responded to a short-term rental, then there must be a name on file that can respond to that incident or location within an hour. Um, and that's that really helps us, whether that's the owner or representative of, that, uh, of, a, of a property management company, there has to be response to that issue within an hour. Somebody to take ownership right. of the property. And if there is if they're not there within an hour, there are fines associated with right. it. You, you know, there there things sadly, things sometimes don't work. 
unless there's an adverse consequence. Right. And so that's the adverse consequence. We need people to be responsible for their short term rentals. And sometimes the, the parties that, and, and nuisance parties that are created. That's the second part of that. Also, right. typically, when we'd respond to a short term rental and there was an issue, we'd issue a notice of violation. And that went before a hearing group. And, right. And so now that's changed to a civil sanction or a civil citation run through, um, the, courts. Run through the courts that will also have fines associated with it. We need a little bit more teeth. It's not that we it's not that the city doesn't want short term rentals. It's that they have to be uh, good stewards and good neighbors in the neighborhood because these short term rentals, if you look at Sedona and and other places, Paradise Valley uh, and now Scottsdale, uh, they're just popping up all over. Great. Right. But you can't hold events. You can't send what we've seen. Right. You can't sell tickets to your event <laughs> in the middle of a neighborhood right. with your DJ right. and your food truck. <laughs> right. That that is not being a good neighbor. That disturbs the peace of an of otherwise quiet neighborhood. And so there has to be some opportunity for us um, to, to just just to hold them responsible. Right. By all means, you want to come to Scottsdale, have a great time. Go to the open. Go to Barrett. Go spend time in the downtown. And you want to rent a short term rental? Yes. Right. By all means, you're pumping uh, dollars into the economy. Right. But it cannot be at the expense of our residents and business owners in that in, in a very negative experience. So exactly. that's really all we want. We want people to uh, to to be good stewards and and uh, and good neighbors. Great. And, and have everybody, you know, I think this is a, a start of a good compromise and, and uh, I'm excited to see this year to see how that works. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, our community member said that uh, they saw a social media post about Citizens Academy. And uh, what is Citizens Academy and, and how can people get involved in Citizens Academy? Yeah, this is another exciting one for us. Due to the pandemic, um, we stopped doing our, our Citizens Academy. Uh, that was always in person. Um, it's an amazing experience for those uh, who've been in it before, who want to do it in the future. And so we are rolling out Citizens Academy again. Um, we just, uh, I would like to say it's Citizens, our Citizens Academy has always been uh, tremendous and a number of other police departments do Citizens Academy. Uh, but we're so connected to our alumni association from the Citizens Academy uh, and are excited to roll this back out. We're doing a little bit different under your leadership. Yes, uh, we're doing some we're doing some great things. We're going to have an in-person component uh, of Citizens Academy of people who want to be there in person. Uh, but we also want to cater to those in the community who want to do things virtually, either because of schedule or concerns, uh, health concerns or pandemic or child care issues, what have you. We've always we, we want to offer an online component of that. So there'll be hands-on component, there'll be online component, and we're really excited to roll this back out and offer this to the community uh, because ultimately what we wind up having is, and I think I've, I'll, you know, I joke around with, about this and I think I've mentioned it on the show a couple of times. It's kind of my, my line about how people think about law enforcement, right? right. Too many people see you know, Bruce Willis on a, in a movie somewhere and think, <laughs> oh, oh, all cops, they just drink till they go to sleep and then they get in, they have terrible problems. And what's the police department all about? Right. Uh, we're really often too often impacted by movies and television, the Citizens Academy or the realtors group that we bring in or Scottsdale leadership, any, anybody that we do a public safety day with, they get to see uh, what For we really do. Right. Not not what is portrayed on TV, not what's portrayed in the news, but what really goes on in a large metropolitan police department, we get to share that. And so what happens is invariably is that those people who participate in Citizens Academy are some of our best ambassadors for law enforcement in the Scottsdale Police Department um, that we could ever ask for. And so uh, we have really career long or lifelong uh, relationships with people who've been to our Citizens Academy, and uh, it's fantastic. And I'm super excited to get that rolled out. And I'll give you the plug. I appreciate your leadership on this. Thank you. I'm um, re yeah. really excited for it. We're really excited, too. To, uh, this will be the first uh, time that we've done a hybrid uh, Citizens Academy and to reach our goal. Um, your and I's goal is to not reach just 30 people, but as many people as we can right. and uh, and educate and entertain. 
So we're very excited to show all the amazing men and women uh, in this organization and, and not just police officers, it's dispatchers, it's records, right, it's, right. it's professional staff. It's, of course, all the fun units too, mounted canine, SWAT tech. But, you know, again, the people that actually make our jobs uh, easy. Absolutely. Uh, crime analysis in the lab and anybody else that I forget to shout out. To. Absolutely. You really get to see what goes into uh, policing today, the technology involved in policing, the personnel and, and what, what great people we have. So we're excited to get that rolling out again. Excellent. And uh, if uh, you're interested in the Citizens Academy, please go to our uh, website and uh, look Citizens Academy and then there'll be a form. You can fill out the form and, and uh, if you uh, you're not uh, going to get a seat in person. You can always do virtual. And if uh, those fill up, uh, then there's always 2023. So, um, Chief, the next question, uh, very interesting question. Um, Chief, if we see people shooting drugs in public places like a sidewalk in front of a church or a hardware store or a parking lot, does the police crisis unit have special procedures like providing them with information or referrals to drug rehab programs? Um, many residents have, have, you know, want to be kind and compassionate to them, but also, you know, the other side of the coin is having them arrested or, or they're unsure of who to call or what to do. Right. You know, I said at the beginning of, uh, of this episode, and I've said it in past episodes, what I like about getting questions from our public is that... Sometimes they're very hard hitting. So I'm going to give the answer to this. And what I like about a hard hitting question like this is that some of our listeners will be happy about it, about that answer, and some will be upset, potentially including this person who sent this this question. in. there's a couple things going on here. If we get a call of a person um, and I, I think they they use shooting drugs. So let's talk, let's just refer to that as injectables or they're shooting a heroin or something along those lines. We have an obligation to enforce the law. That's there, that's half of the equation is we have an obligation to enforce the law. So if we have somebody um, using illegal drugs in front of a business shooting up, um, there's the there's the law enforcement component of that where we will make an arrest if we once we have probable cause to make an arrest or if they're in possession of illegal narcotics. Right. That's half the equation. Right. I understand the idea and the compassion behind people who will look at that individual and say no they have a there's a there's a problem there they have an addiction and should they be arrested and the question is often yeah or the answer is often yes they they should be because um not, let's take the you know the law side is easy they're 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 breaking a law and in most cases if you're doing injectables like that it's a it's a felony crime but that is also the gateway to treatment oftentimes because there are so many people that we come into contact with who who won't get treatment themselves, who won't go into rehab themselves. And if they get into the criminal justice system, then typically court ordered rehab is part of that, as, as part of, uh, of any type of sentencing. And, and, and so um, that oftentimes is the gateway to at least attempting to get them off of, you know, to help ease that addiction um, or get them off that drug. And so I know people have compassion and some, uh, quite honestly, have been told in the past, yeah, if I see somebody doing drugs, I'd love to get them help, um, but I won't call the police because I don't want them to get arrested. The problem is, and if you see this in other large cities in the Northwest and in the Northeast, is that if we don't address the criminality side of it as well, um, and all we say is, well, we're going to have the compassionate side and here's fresh needles and here's where you should do your drugs, then that problem just, it never, it, it never goes away. It just gets bigger. Right. And so our goal really is to get some help uh, to those people. But we had the, the, the entryway into that, the front door uh, oftentimes is, through an arrest and, and uh, the, the person mentions uh, the police crisis unit and, and that's somebody who's clearly and I'm glad they have an understanding of what we have in the organization we have a uh, our, we, we call PCIS police crisis intervention services and yes they help as, they can help as a gateway with great resources great information um, if for those who aren't in possession of, of uh, illegal drugs in a public place you know we, we encourage our listeners to to, if you have a family member, a friend, an associate that has um, drug, a drug addiction, 
Absolutely. Reach out to our police crisis intervention service and we will provide resource after resource after resource to help that problem. But if you're committing a crime at the time that the police encounter you, we're going to deal with that crime initially, and then that will be the gateway into into some help. So great question. Thank you. Great question. I think it's uh, it's important, too, to, to tell our listeners that our officers are aware of, of both sides of the coin. And when they go to calls, you know, they will evaluate it. And, and we have some great partnerships with Scottsdale Rescue Mission and Health and Human Services. Right. And so it's, it's uh, our officers go out there and, and they're going to evaluate and see what this individual needs. Do they, they need to be arrested? If, that, if that's the case, then they can also refer them to some addiction help as well. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. So this is, a, this is an exciting one for, for uh, our officers. Um, and this is an important question because uh, you recently made some changes to the appearance policy of our officers on patrol. And uh, can you give us an explanation of the changes and, and what the community might see? Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this has been a long time coming, right? Long time coming. There's, there is an interesting, uh, you know, I, I started with the Scottsdale Police Department in 1994, July of 1994. So I think we're going on almost 28 years ago. And interesting, the evolution of law enforcement, just in terms of technology and pattern and practice, policy, all of that. Right. But also in, you know, when I first came on, it was, you know, you had to, you had a high and tight haircut, <laughs> right? You know, you were, sh- the, yes, shine su- boots. Su- yeah, super clean cut look. Right. And as we've uh, evolved societally, uh, the police department has to evolve too. And right. so um, uh, we had originally had allowed under chief uh, retired chief Rod Bell's leadership, we had kind of evolved facial hair into you could have a mustache and a goatee because right. those of our listeners who know Chief Rod Bell, uh, he still got that giant, you know, mustache. 1970s mustache <laughs> going. And so he's rocking it. Chief Rod Bell, if you're listening, I know you're an avid listener in your free time. Um, that's a great mustache. But so we, we ha- see so yeah, so mustache and we then started to allow, allow a goatee so the natural progression now and we we have gotten from our our not just our officers but people throughout the organization of can we please trend you know evolve from the goatee to a uh, to a, a well trimmed i'm gonna call it a well trimmed well trimmed beard and uh and so we are gonna we are now authorizing that and people say okay how, how long can it be and no i don't <laughs> i don't want people calling to say hey you know i saw an officer and and their beard was longer than what uh, chief walter said on, on this right. podcast uh it's a quarter inch okay or a number two on the clippers. On the clippers. Yeah. So you, everybody, okay. okay, I know what the number two is. So <laughs> so right now we're going to be in an interesting growth period, right. I think, okay. because I'm going to have some some officers, uh, young and older, who are going to just really work at that attempt to grow that beard. And see if they can actually yeah. grow a beard. And that's going to be in our policy, too. Right. It's that you have a growth period. If it doesn't look good after the growth period, it's gone. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't want my... My early 20 somethings officers rolling up and, you know, after a month of trying to grow a beard and uh, it's patchy as all get out. So the other thing. And so that one really. Beards have become so normalized in our, in our you know, right. society again today. I mean, they were, you know, a long time ago when we had a period where they weren't. And so it's just so normal now that I don't think it's going to be an issue. The next one depends on who you are. <laughs> M- might might. uh has the ability to ruffle some feathers. Right. And that's been our tattoo policy. Uh, I always use my mother, who's 78 years old, and um, my oldest son is a former Army Ranger, 1st Ranger Battalion out of Savannah, Thank Georgia. You. Thank you to him for his service. Good, great, great young man. Um, he, in his service to our country, his his unit, um, they, they, a lot of tattoos, a lot of tattoos, and so he spent uh, he spent a lot of his uh, his salary from our federal government <laughs> getting <laughs> tattoos during his time in the military. And my mother, who's seventy eight years old, said, uh, 
her generation, she said, he looks like a, a street ruffian. <laughs> she, we use the word ruffian. Ruffian. Yeah, I thought that was pretty. And so I understand that there's always going to be part of our populace that says, eh, I really don't like tattoos. And do they? And so in, in the past, what we've done is if you had more than a third of your exposed body part, typically your arms, Arm, right. if more than a third of that exposed body part was covered in a tattoo, you were, you were required by policy to wear long sleeves. The only change I'm making to that is I'm removing that requirement. So um, you'll see uh, some of our, our citizens, our business owners, our partners out in the community may, may see a handful of officers here and there that have um, more exposed tattoos. You still can't have, you cannot have a tattoo on your face or your neck right. um, uh, or the back of your hands unless you've been grandfathered in, um, which we don't have very many of those. Um, you know, so face, neck, hands, no. But you can have tattoos on your arms or your forearms and things like that. So, but we're still looking at uh, again what the what the tattoos are to make yes. sure that can't they're, be offensive, right? They right. got to be good taste. There's a greater reality here, and I talk about the evolution of of law enforcement and our culture, and whether you agree with it or not. But what we're seeing is that this is a whole other show we can talk about the what the narrative on law enforcement today um, has really uh, and there's a there can be a negative or there is a negative narrative on law enforcement it has been over the last two years in the country and get into all the reasons behind that but uh, not for this show uh, I want to get more more importantly to, to dr. Golding but um, we are seeing fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people who want to be police officers. Moreover, we're seeing fewer and fewer people who want to work in a police department, period. Well, I think we're seeing that around the country. You go to, I think we, we just talked about that uh, Oregano's Tempe and Oregano's North Scottsdale are both temporarily closed. They can't get enough workers right. to work there. And so I know that over the last year plus that I've been the chief, we have lost good quality candidates to other police agencies because of our tattoo policy. Right. If it's 115 degrees out, or do you want to wear a long sleeve shirt? Right. Um, or, hey, I know that Tempe or Chandler or Phoenix or Mesa are allowing beards and they don't have to wear long sleeves. I've got to do everything possible to make us the most competitive police agency out there because we're all now fighting for a dwindling, an extremely dwindling pool of applicants for police officer. I'm still only going to hire the best. Right. But whether they have a beard or tattoo or not that has going to be shown it is uh, does not equate to them not being the best. So right. I have to I have to do what I believe is right for the organization to evolve us to make sure that we're still competitive in the marketplace. And and again you talk about, you know, policing, you know, needs to evolve and needs to mirror you know, the community that it serves. And so that's, Absolutely. you know, that's the acceptable now stuff. Now, so. our, our people are very happy about that. They are happy. I'm already seeing people, you know, with just all kinds of <laughs> hair, <laughs> facial hair going in all different directions. And it's terrifying. But uh, it's, I, I'm glad that we brought this up just because, again, with the special events uh, that are happening, it it uh, it is not normal to see, you know, Scottsdale police officers of beards or, or short sleeves. So right, right. Uh, it's good that we get that out there. So uh, moving on to the next question, uh, again, special event season, uh, Bear Jackson uh, coming up just around the corner. What do you expect to see as far as crowds? Uh, oh, boy. And in, uh, are there differences from last year to this year? Yes. Uh, and then a can going into the same question for, you know, waste management. Yeah, I think and, the answer is going to be the same. And that's why I'm excited to have Dr. Golding here, who's kind of running the show. And uh, I think he's uh, he's going to speak in the same vein that we will, which is we're both excited. We're really excited. Our The Thunderbirds and, and the PD, we're really excited for another great event season and another great Open, another great Barrett-Jackson. Um but I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I'm excited too. It's it's that you know we've we've been doing this and the PD and and the Thunderbirds were just great uh, partners together. But with the cap on the number last year at about five thousand, and I remember being out there on a Wednesday. I think it was Pro Am Day. Um, Pro Am Day. Pro. Yeah, pro right. professional amateurs, pro am day. <laughs> <laughs> pro am is the uh, is a security company. Right, um, great partner. Another great partner. Yes. But it was um, it was very strange to see so f what I what I my 
just my eyes just were shocked at so few people being out there when you you know you've been here as long as i have as long as you have right uh, and you know the, the, the various opens every year we they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more fun and more lively and a, great people yeah, watching yeah and uh and same with bear jackson bigger and bigger and so to see that smaller footprint uh what i thought was this year um, it's going to be big, <laughs> big. It's going to be, uh, you know, I would be surprised and we'll let Dr. Golding talk about that. I'll be surprised if we don't break some records this year. But I think with that, we need to tell people to have fun, but be patient, <laughs> Yes. be calm, understand the crowds. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think we're going to have large crowds, uh, a very vibrant atmosphere. Uh, what is the greatest show on grass? And then with Barrett Jackson, um, I think we're going to see a lot of that. People want to get out. Yes. You know, when when, uh, when Governor Ducey opened up, uh, you know, beyond 50 percent capacity uh, last March, what we saw was people were just just flooding out there, couldn't get enough. Um, my wife and I, this, this is as, an, as a side note, when you look at Scottsdale, we're so different. When my wife and I were out last weekend on a Saturday and we were in Old Town, we were using the Barrio Queen gift card that you got me. And uh, we just, we were walking around Old Town. It was packed. And this was three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. This was, this wasn't, uh, you know, bar time or nightclub right. uh, hop in or anything. This was at three o'clock in the afternoon and the streets were packed with pedestrians and, and pedal buses. And, and so people, that's one of the things that makes Scott still unique, but, um, people are out and excited and they want to do things and they they felt, I think, pent up for a long time. And, right. and I think the open and uh, Barrett Jackson and spring training and the Parada and all of our signature events Arabian Horse are, are going to be packed. Yeah. I'm excited for Barrett just to, to see the amazing cars and everything else. It's 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 going to be great. And when the open is packed, when Barrett is packed, then uh, then usually our downtown and our it's bars packed. and our nightclubs, it's hopping. It's I mean, on an on an average weekend, we're bringing in between 10 and 15,000 people a night. <sighs> now, wow. add, the, add all the, the visitors for the open and Barrett Jackson and the Raving Horse Show and anything thing that goes on at Westworld. Uh, it's going to be going to be exciting. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for all the questions. Keep them, keep them coming. Great questions. Um, yeah, great, great questions. Well, and, you know, I always say this, but uh, send in a question. I'm going to answer it. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a hard-hitting question. You've got questions about, you know, some recent uh, news story that you've seen about Scottsdale PD. One was just out this week or a press release that I, that I put out or the organization has put out. And you have questions about something we've done, how we do things. Please ask and uh, and we'll answer those questions so that's a wrap for the community questions this month thank you to those that submitted questions if you have a question for a future episode feel free to send it our way next on the show we're talking to this year's waste management phoenix open tournament chairman he is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon who co-leads the practice of oral and facial surgeons of arizona he is also the official oral and maxillofacial surgeon of the Phoenix Suns and ASU Athletics. Please welcome Dr. Michael Golding. Absolutely. Very excited. So our uh, chairman for the 2022 Waste Management Open is Dr. Michael Golding. And um, we're excited that he's taking the time out of his busy day because when I read his bio, um, I, he he is a surgeon, an oral surgeon. I don't know how. I don't even know what that maxillofacial uh, word is. <laughs> um, I'm a police officer. I know that's <laughs> so <clears throat> so excited to have you, Doctor Golding. And Welcome. and, and um, can you just would you just kind of tell us about yourself a little bit and kind of your connection uh, in the Thunderbirds and how you got there? And then we'll I think we'll explore a little bit our partnership and the amazing partnership that we have with the Thunderbirds. Uh, I just couldn't ask for really a, a better partner in uh, in some in, the, in a colossal event than the Thunderbirds and uh, the amazing things that you do, not just for the Open, but in the community. And so, welcome. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Chief, and it's a pleasure to be here. And Commander Coffee. Um, you know, before I start, I just want to say thank you for your service and I appreciate uh, that. thank you to all the, uh, the, the the police force of Scottsdale. You guys are the best in the business. Um, living in this community, we're so lucky to have 
such a great Thank you. police force and, and uh, like you said, ambassadors of our lifestyle. And so we're very appreciative. And, and then within the Thunderbird organization, we're so lucky to work with um, Scottsdale Police, Scottsdale Fire, and it's what makes it all work. You know, it's Absolutely. an event like this uh, without a partnership that we have with you, uh, none of it would be possible. So uh, we're very, very, very proud and uh, and and thrilled with our relationship that, like you said, is over several decades. Yes, yeah, it's great. So, uh, but yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I moved to the valley about ten years ago. Um, I'm from the East Coast. Uh, met my wife and a happy wife, uh, happy wife. <laughs> yes, that's um, right. Yeah. So finished residency in, in Miami and South Beach. And uh, we moved out to the West Coast and uh, made Phoenix a home. I've been been here 10 years and I've loved every minute of it. Good. Um, I've been part of the Thunderbird organization for eight years. Wow. Um, and it's uh, <clears throat> it's been a very special organization for multiple reasons. One, you know, got to meet a lot of great people. Um, but the good that this organization is part of uh, throughout the Valley is very special and something that's been, uh, something I'm very, very proud of and, and it continues to grow. Uh, and the impact that this event has on this community, uh, is, is never been more apparent in right. the last two years. Right. Uh, and we got to see it firsthand, you know, last year, uh, obviously a much uh, smaller event. Uh, and that came with uh, consequences that we didn't even really fully appreciate until, you know, we were getting ready to, to hold the event and all of the charitable organizations that we impact throughout the Valley. And there's right. hundreds of them, um, you know, they felt the squeeze. And so we we kind of as an organization put boots on the ground and, and went out uh, as as a group and visited these uh, these entities and, and saw the need that was there. And it really, really it hit home that we might not be able to perform uh, the way that we had in the past because right. of the crowds. And so we're just so excited to see things trending back to normal because we know the need is there and we feel the obligation to get that money. Back yeah. Community. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's great. And, you know, I, I think that, um, so often people think, and when the Thunderbirds, they think of the open, uh, there is just such an amazing charitable component uh, of everything that the Thunderbirds do. Can you kind of speak to your role this year as, as the chairman and then kind of that that connectivity to the community and that charitable um, that charitable component of the Thunderbirds that I, that, um, I, I think our listeners love to hear. I think a lot of them don't understand that, you know, they think it's a big party, but they don't understand all the, the donations that you do and, and how much you do contribute to the community. Yeah, this is the 87th, uh, uh hosting of the, the Phoenix open. And so for 87 years, the Thunderbirds, uh, the charge of the Thunderbirds is to promote the Valley of the sun through sport. And so it was created in that, in, in that, vein and, and has grown to this philanthropic machine um, that, you know, we are able to uh, host an event that generates so much money. And all of that money goes back to the community. Uh, we we support youth sports throughout the valley and throughout the state. Um, and then uh, the Thunderbird Charities is a organization within the Thunderbirds that takes the big dollars and, and gives them out to those who are in need the most. And it's a significant impact. Uh, you know, Phoenix Children's Hospital um, helping hands, uh, St. Mary's Food Bank, um, and Special Olympics, all are huge uh, parts of our organization. And, and we're so proud, and, you know, the Boys and Girls Club. Right. And so, you know, throughout the year, uh, our organization is made up of uh, two or 300 Thunderbirds. There are 55 actives at all time. Um, and so that part of the organization is kind of the, the core of the active uh, hands on the tournament. Each Thunderbird has a responsibility at the tournament, and I am uh, honored and, and uh, humbled to be the, the guy that oversees yeah. all of the chairmen. Wow. So you start from, but in the conversation that we were having prior to, to going on is that you started out, you know, at the, at the, can you talk about that and kind of that ascension and then, then what, what, as the chairman, what kind of what you what you do? Yeah, each and every year we uh, we finish an open, and uh, as I said, we have fifty five active Thunderbirds, and we have your your Thunderbird career as an active uh, ends when you turn forty five. Okay, and hmm. so we uh, we have a uh, recruitment recruitment process that that takes place, bring in new Thunderbirds, and they're uh, quickly assigned to a position 
at the open. Okay. Um, so you start out, you know, as the assistant parking chairman, and that's one of the entry level jobs at the open. And it's a lot of right, job. It's, oh my God. It's, it's a very, very difficult job. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, the tip of the spear. You know, right. if you can't get people in, oh. they, can, they can't enjoy the open. Yes. So um, everybody gets that job. I was very fortunate to get uh, the parking assistant chairman, which uh, was what we were talking about earlier. My relationship with it, the Scottsdale Police Department uh, is, is great. Uh, you know, I have such good friends within your department and uh, lifelong friends and and uh and you see firsthand how important our relationship is and so you know i went from there to the, the parking chairman and then based on you know your performance your interests and and where the chairman at that time sees you uh, fit best you get positioned into the next job okay. and so um i was uh, elected to be the tournament chairman uh, for this year and uh it's a huge honor uh it's a big responsibility but at the end of the day you're you know i'm I'm one of 55 actives and one of two or 300 Thunderbirds that all come together and put on this event and, and are very proud of our organization, the traditions and, and the impact. we have. So during that time, you, you were the assistant parking chairman. And then what other because I know that there's a lot. There's the banners. There's there are many. There's concessions. Security. Yeah. Security. There's there's a lot. What yeah, else? Have you, you know, done? at the open, it's a, it's a massive property. It's a massive yes. event. And one of the things that's really important with Thunderbirds, we like to to keep our hands on on each and every aspect of it. So I finished parking and I was, uh, you know, uh, very lucky to be elected the Bird's Nest assistant chairman. Oh, yeah. So oh, I yeah. ran uh, ran the Bird's Nest for two years. Uh, I was uh, very proud of the year that uh, Snoop Dogg was there <laughs> and the chain smokers. Um, and yeah. we had an we had an epic year, uh, record crowds and 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 record revenue. Yeah. Um, and so I left the Bird's Nest and then I uh, was the assistant chairman at Greenskeeper. Okay. Uh, which is on the 18th hole on the fairway, and uh, and then following that, I was very surprised and and honored to be uh, elected the assistant tournament chairman. Okay. Which I was uh, under Scott Jenkins last year. Yeah. And then uh, this that, year I'll be the, the, the tournament big, chairman. The big dog. Yeah. yeah. Nice. What's well, funny because uh, Commander Coffee is the bird's nest commander this year. Very so. excited. Yeah. Very it's so excited. fun. <laughs> it is fun. And, and I too, like you, have kind of worked my way up. Uh, succession planning, we we do the same thing in the, in the police department. So work my way up through the open and very honored that Chief uh, is going to let me be the bird's nest chairman. Uh, Commander, yeah, it should be fun. Right. I'll, come, I'll come visit you, and then I'll uh, I'll drive away quickly. Can you talk about uh, just real quickly that the bands that are going to be there during the week are? are yeah, we have um, on on Wednesday we have Diplo, um, Cole Swindell. Uh, yeah. And that'll be the the kickoff of the bird's nest. And and keep in mind, the bird's nest has not been here for you know two years. Right. So I think the the demand, like you said, is going to be off it's the charts. Be, yes. Yeah, we, uh, we're expecting all four sellout nights. I'm a little scared. <laughs> well, then we have the we have the the, the, the I call it the like the pre concert. Yes. Yeah, on that Saturday night. Yeah, that's that's something I'm very proud of. We've been working on that for you know five years, and uh, that's kind of uh, the the inaugural um, concert in the Coliseum. Um, you know, one of those things we looked at we do this build of the city that is the the, the tpc of scottsdale right. february i mean right. it's a huge huge undertaking seven months out of the year it's either being built or taken down and um, <laughs> that's it's crazy phenomenal. yeah and we, we have concerts and and great acts coming from all over the country throughout the year we have one of the most intimate and amazing arenas in all of sport and so we we've been just really looking at it to utilize that yeah. that venue um to create bigger impact in the community, bring in huge acts. And, and this year we have Old Dominion and Thomas Rhett. Yeah. So that's Saturday that's be before good. the yeah. event. Yeah. February yeah. 5th, before the event, we're going to have 12,000 fans. Right. Um, you know, they're going to filter down into the, the 16th hole, the iconic 16th hole. And we're going to kick off wow. the week with a great show. And yeah. I think it'll be one of those uh, signature iconic music events mm -hmm. that will be here to stay for years and years to come. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very proud of that event. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah. You know, we are talking about the 16 and you know every time i'm out there and just see the massive crowds i always look at the golfers right teeing off and i think how, how do you do that <clears throat> with all of you know all those people and uh and so kind of that golf related question is uh and i don't know if you're a big golfer but which golfers are you most excited to see this year yeah, I, mean, yeah, I love I love our event. I love I love golf. Um, John Rom, uh, he looks at our event as a major. Uh, he's a, he's an ASU guy. He's committed. He's the number one golfer in the world. Yeah, I'm super excited to have him back. Um, Justin Thomas, 
uh, Ricky Fowler, Jordan Spieth, yeah. uh, Webb Simpson, a returning champion. Brooks Kepka uh, is, a, you know, a, a great guy. Just did a 45 minute interview with him on, on Zoom. He's two time champion at our event. Wow. So he's coming back. Um, these young guys, it's really cool to see how much they uh, appreciate our crowds. Yeah. You know, there's been years where some golfers don't necessarily love the, the different atmosphere, <laughs> right. um, but right. I think that has significantly changed. And to your credit, you know, we are one of the only events or the only event on tour that have a uniformed police officer with the golfers right. uh, throughout the final uh, rounds of play. They appreciate that greatly. Um, they love the fan interaction. And I think COVID um, and, and the fallout there really showed the professional athletes how important fans are. Right. And how fun it is to to play in front of fans. And we saw it last year, you know, Rory McIlroy stepped up to the ball at the Pro-Am and he uh, encouraged the crowd to get to get loud on the first tee. That's great. Uh, you know, I think they, they're excited to have fans back and there's no better place to see fans than our tournament. You could be, I don't know, it just feels like there's such a great environment there. There's a lot of fun, a lot of energy, and you can be, you know, relatively close to your favorite golfer and watch them tee off there. I liken it to spring training. Why spring training is so much fun is because you can be closer to your, you know, to your favorite player. And it's just such a great, a great environment. Yeah, it's excellent. So you've already kind of touched a little bit about it, but throughout the years, um, can you talk a little bit about the partnerships between Scottsdale Police, Scottsdale Fire Pro M that we gave a shout out to, and Waste Management, and of course PGA, uh, and the Thunderbirds, and and why uh, why it is so successful? And and my time up there uh, as the security liaison, I talked to the PGA reps, and and they always say how impressed they are about our partnership and how well the tournament runs compared to other tournaments. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, I think it really starts from the exact day that the, the previous tournament ends. Our relationship with the Scottsdale Police Department and, and you uh, is, is so close and, um, you know, and so powerful and uh, so welcoming. You know, we rely on, you know, you were together ambassadors of this event. And yeah. and that's what I think the public should really appreciate. You know, it, sometimes there's a negative connotation to seeing the police force somewhere. But you guys are the ambassadors of fun. You know, without you there, we can't do or have the fun that we have. So um, <clears throat> we... Um, I'm going to like that. I'm going to steal that. Um, ambassadors steal of fun. The yeah. police department is ambassadors of <laughs> right. fun. That yeah, is I mean, great. It's, I, like that. I like that. It's it's what allows <laughs> us to have such a huge event and have it safely, uh, you know, and and complete a, a great week without having any any significant hiccups. Right. You know, having that many people come in and out of such a small area. You know, it's 200 acres, but the amount of people that, that come in and out yeah. on, the, on the highways, it's impressive. And so um, Pro-Am and fire yeah. and, and waste management, I mean, they are integral in that. I mean, waste management does a phenomenal job, you know, cleaning, cleaning up after everybody and making sure that it is pristine the next day. Yeah, we're very lucky. We have, you know, I, I often say the greatest title sponsor in all of sport and, and uh, waste management uh, has been um, amazing. The, you know, their energy, the culture they bring to our tournament, um, it just goes hand in hand and, and, and Scottsdale Fire Department. And so, you know, right away, our, our chairman, our security chairman um, and, and the chairman of the Bird's Nest, the tournament chairman and our entire group engages the relationships with the police department, with right. the fire department, um, with Pro-Am and our partners on course and it's just a well-oiled machine and and i think uh and i hope you you all know that uh, you're so important to us um we you know we encourage uh you know close interaction and and we love we love meeting you know every morning we have meetings with you guys and and how can we make it better you right. know how did yes, yesterday go where did we have any problems let's make it better today let's work together and improve the event which it just at the end of the day brings out more people yeah. brings out more money and more money goes back in the community. Yeah, really, that feeling of safety. People know when they come out that they're going to be it's they're going to be safe, and and it's going to be a great uh, atmosphere. And those relationships, I just uh, I think, are just the absolute foundational components. Funny because we were talking about uh, my special events uh, sergeant, the coordinator, and Wes Schaefer, who you know well. Shout out to Wes. Shout, shout out to Wes Schaefer. Boy. And Wes is always like, "Oh yeah, I'll get Golding over there. Golding, Golding. It's not <laughs> Doctor Golding. It's not anything. So it's like, yeah, Golding this and Golding." And so I just, I, that to me is so cool because that just speaks to a great relationship 
um, you know, with, with between us and, and, and all the Thunderbirds. And so it's just those little, little, those little things that you put a smirk on your face that, you know, people are, are, are really connected to one another to make this the best event possible. hundred percent. I'm glad you said that. Wes Schaefer is one of my good friends. And, uh, so right away, first, first year, uh, as a Thunderbird, we, we became good friends and it's just great to have that, that point of contact. You know, if, if he needs anything, he knows he can call me right away and it gets done yeah. and vice versa. Did Wes ever tell you, you know, that he, I put him in that position years and years ago and he went into it kicking and screaming. 2015. And, uh, and, and so when I was the bureau chief and, uh, I think it's been one of the best things for him, his personal growth as a, as a supervisor in the organization, but the connectivity that he has with the Thunderbirds, with the Charos, with, with just, with everybody, with, with the, with Pro-Am, with, it's just it's amazing. And so I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, shout out to Wes for me too. Uh, that just, he was the right man for the, for the spot. Absolutely. He didn't know it at the time, but he knows it now. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I stole his golf cart at one point, uh, by mistake. So he, uh, it was a funny story out in parking. I, you know, it was late at night and we were trying to get everybody out of the golf course. And, and, you know, I had to go, uh, do another task and jumped in a golf cart and, and took off didn't know it was his. And, and he called me a little bit later than that. He said, you, I have your golf cart. You have mine. So it was pretty funny. <laughs> We yeah, take his golf cart all the time. Yeah, he's a good, it's very he's a good dude. So interesting question for you is what is the one thing you would tell spectators about coming out to the open this year? You know, I think this year, uh, more than it, the, the demand is high. So make your plans early um, and certainly, uh, you know, make sure you uh, get out there early um, and be patient. You know, like, like you said, I think I think we're all excited to be back to normal. And I think with that comes a responsibility to understand that uh, with the crowds comes, you know, there's there just needs to be some patience and some um, understanding and some grace. Uh, with the process, um, I've, you know, I've been to golf events and, and events all over the world, really. And, and I'm so proud of how well our yes. event is run. And we pride ourselves uh, together, the, the police force and the Thunderbirds and, and Scottsdale Fire on how well it is run. But at the end of the day, there's there's going to be lines. There's going to be yeah. some delays yeah. getting in and off the property. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and I hope and I and I expect and, and I've seen in the past our community comes together safely and the patience is there. But I think this year more than ever, just have an understanding, you know, we've all talked about supply chain right. issues. We've all talked about shortages of staff, you know, with ride share um, and, and getting people in and off the property. Yeah. You know, there's probably going to be some hiccups, but we're, we're committed to making it the best possible uh, environment and, and experience that we can. And so, you know, that, that's what I'd ask is yeah. just, you know, a little patience, patience, Spot respect on. the game, yep. yeah. respect the players, respect, respect the game yep. and respect each other. You use three words there that I think are just so spot on patience, grace and understanding. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not only, I think we we'll have to put, yes. put that out, we'll give you a quote on, on our social media mm -hmm. and those three, but those, those three, really, if you applied those three to everyday living people, yes. we'd all be getting along a whole lot better. But in this, you're remember where you're going. You're going to a place that's vibrant and exciting, but a lot of people want to go to. Going to have a little bit more patience. If you know the bus to the ride share lot, if you're in a line, a little patience. You, this is, and so it, we just treating each other with a little bit more dignity and respect, and having a great time out in the sun and and uh, out on a great course and and uh, that you know party on grass and some great golf. Yeah, and I would, you know, I, would, I would tell all the patrons that I see it firsthand for eight years. The police force is out there to ensure you're having a good time, right. not to take away from your time. So understand that you know thank them when you're out there and 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 just enjoy the 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 day, the day you're out there and and understand we're all trying to have a good time with you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, ambassadors of fun. Yeah, <laughs> I really like yeah. that. We're going to post that somewhere. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You know that uh, 2022 is going to be record breaking. Uh, people want to get out, um, but we're already planning 2023 because the exciting thing about 2023, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. So Super Bowl is going to be at the same time as the Waste Management Open. And so if you can talk a little bit about you know, the planning of that and, and maybe. Is it different for you, you know, and expecting with the Super Bowl here, do you have to do anything? Are you 
thinking about anything that Thunderbirds thinking about anything different or is it just status quo we're going to work on our event and they're going to work on their event and we're going to be good to go you know we, we currently work hand in hand with the Super Bowl host committee um, so yeah it's different mm-hmm. um, certainly our event is the focus uh, for absolutely. us absolutely um, but we for us too yeah <laughs> right. uh, but it, it, it definitely is, it provides a different spin I think in t- 2015 it's just a little bit bigger it's a, a you know a little bit more significant there's just more crowds in and around the town yeah um, but from a standpoint of our event you know we enjoy the energy that comes along with having the Super Bowl here um, but our event you know is is what it is every year yeah um, I don't think we really run our event any differently but uh but you know there's there's certainly an aspect more energy there's huge demand and and that demand i think has been building up over the past seven years you know the the corporate uh sponsorship the corporate interest in the open uh, is elevated to an extent that we, you know, don't see any other year when right. it's Super Bowl. So we have to prepare for that and and maximize that um, that demand uh, to maximize our impact on the community. So we're always looking for ways to uh, improve the fan experience, improve the hospitality experience, and that's why every year, including this year, you're going to see every venue on our course. You know, we have a million square feet wow. of hospitality. Wow, wow. Um, and that's. <laughs> Well, I know I mean, the ridge. Yeah. The ridge has grown from yeah. you know a booth to now now a destination. Thirty five thousand square foot platform, <laughs> right? Um, with Phenomenal. hospitality and amenities throughout for our general admission fan. It really shows our commitment to being the people's open. And you know, so the Super Bowl year, we want to maximize the impact on the community, and to do that is preparation. And so yeah. we'll prepare. We'll make sure that the hospitality uh, needs are met by the you know the demand, and and to do that, it's just going to take you know, another full force effort between yeah. you guys and us yeah. and we'll do a great job. And I know you will too. You think uh, the Saturday uh, concert will be something that you're going to do again? A hundred percent. That yeah. was our goal. You know, I've been working with a team uh, within Thunderbirds to get this off the ground this year, right. um, show that we can do it, which we know we can. Um, and I think it'll be, uh, you know, spinning into the Super Bowl year. It's going to be a, an exciting year. I'm going to, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to chair that event next year and, yeah. uh, and get, get an act that's going to blow people's minds. That's great. That is great. As you can tell from his earlier bio and our chat, Dr. Golding is a busy man. So we're extremely appreciative of him taking the time to be our guests on this episode of Shop Talk. Now it's time to close out episode six with today's for reals questions. Excellent. All right, I think we're gonna now we're into the uh, you're into oh, the fun rapid round the, questions. This to, is to, to, rapid to, to, fire. to close us out. All right, I've got a few rapid questions. And Quan must have done these because I'm did. looking over it because I I have not seen these questions, <laughs> but I'm looking over at your sheet and yeah. I already see a Star Wars question. Right, so Good we'll, we'll start that as a shout out to Kevin. So, Star Wars or Star Trek best villain? Star Wars. Um, uh, it's got to be Darth Vader. Wow. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'm old school. Of course. I'm a Star Trek fan, though, too. Khan. Khan. I yeah. was just going to say. Khan. There's Khan. no way there's, yeah. So who would win between Khan and Darth Vader? Khan. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you know, I don't know. <laughs> My goodness. I don't, I don't even know Star Trek at all. So I'm glad, I'm glad the question uh, gave me an out with Star Wars. You know, Khan is just a, you know, a superhuman. But, right. But, but Darth Vader has the force. Exactly. I think Darth Vader. Yeah, Darth Vader. The whole father-son thing is right. just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite time of the year? Uh, open season. Okay. Uh, I like the spring. I really like the spring, especially up in Alpine, you know, where my, wow. my yeah, yeah, so spring. So Christmas was just finished. Uh, I have to ask this because everybody wants to know, Die Hard, Christmas movie or not? <laughs> Die Hard Christmas, 100% Christmas movie. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I watched it this year. Right. Uh, <laughs> so this is a Quan question. Sleep in, as Quan does, or wake up early if you don't have anything to do. I don't sleep a lot, so I'm, I'm up early every day. If I don't have anything to do, because I I have I almost <laughs> never have nothing to do, so I wouldn't mind sleeping in every once in, in a Alpine? while. In Alpine? You, you have stuff to do? Oh, that's... <laughs> you can relax. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Uh, so if I have nothing to do, which never happens, I, right. I wouldn't mind a sleep. You know, a nap would be good every once in a I'd while. I'd say naps. <laughs> naps are good. I, I, I I'm like over naps. 50 now. <laughs> I like naps. Okay, so I know you and I, Doc, you and I agree on this. Favorite vehicle that you've ever owned? 
I just got a Ford Bronco. I know. And, I'm so uh, jealous. I, I'm, I'm happy to say it's the best car I've ever owned. I love it. And, uh, you know, you're going to see a couple of Ford Broncos out at the, at the open. We've okay. got, yeah, Ford is our sponsor uh, and awesome. they're sponsoring our fleet vehicles. So, but I couldn't be uh, happier. The, the new Ford Bronco is amazing. It is very cool. I'm going to go with his competitor. Yeah. Uh, uh, Toyota 4Runner TRD Off Road Premium. Ooh. Yes. All right. Don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty epic. If you didn't live in Arizona, what would be your second choice? Well, I grew up born and raised in Pittsburgh. Um, Steelers. Th- yeah, huge Steelers fan. I love the the city of Pittsburgh. The, my family's there. Uh, the people, uh, amazing people, very loyal people. And, and so I miss that part of it. Uh, the weather, I, I don't miss at all. Right. Um, so probably, if not Pittsburgh, it would probably be somewhere in Denver or, oh. you know, Colorado. Maybe Telluride. Okay. Um, big skier. Mm, yeah. I love skiing. So yeah. if I could retire tomorrow, that's probably where I'd head. Right. Steamboat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Steamboat. Any, anywhere with a ski hill. <laughs> nice. Chief. Wyoming. Yes. There are more elk in Wyoming than people. Yes. That's my kind of thing. <laughs> Great hunting. Yeah. Wow. I'm fortunate because I, I grew up in Denver, skied, Telluride, Steamboat, Aspen, but but I like I like Scottsdale. Um last question. Uh, what was the last book you read and would you recommend it? Decision Points by George W. Bush. Nice. Uh, yeah, and I absolutely would uh, recommend it. Uh, we just had him as a guest uh, speaker at our tee off luncheon um, to kind of signify the start of open season. It was an incredible day. Uh, he's uh, you know, a brilliant leader, brilliant man. Got to spend some time with him. And that book really uh, sums up his time as president, how uh, difficult – you know, the the decisions he faced and and how he arrived at each of them. And I just find him to be extremely interesting and a remarkable career and uh, one of our greatest presidents. So I highly recommend the book. Nice. Chief? Mine is uh, is a work of fiction. And people who know me well know I'm a huge fan of any any type of dystopian, you know, (laughs) post-apocalyptic book or movie. And so I just finished a, a, a dystopian novel called uh, hell divers yes was, yes was very interesting and and uh because you're going to give that to me to start reading <laughs> that's right <laughs> so excellent yeah excellent yeah i don't uh i haven't had time to read i've been very busy get you so. know do audio books too you can yes. to and from work that's so, true well that wraps us up uh my sincere thanks to Dr. Michael Golding. Uh, excited for, uh, or I'm going to call him Golding or Dr. G. Right. Um, like, like Wes. Um, <laughs> Golding. Uh, super excited for a great Waste Management Phoenix Open this year. Um, Very your leadership in it. The partnerships that we have with the Thunderbirds. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Could not ask for better partners. And so... Thanks, Chris. Thank you. For, uh, for co-hosting yeah. uh, for Kevin today. Or and tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, to all our listeners out there, as with that continues to grow, thanks for listening. Please keep sending the questions in. And remember, we'd like to sign off with every day offers each of us the opportunity to be more in the service of others. And so go out there, do great things, take care of each other. I'm actually going to close with uh, uh, Dr. Golding's that. comment yeah. about about patience, about grace, and about understanding. If you apply that to being out at the open and you apply that to your day-to-day lives, I think we would just wind up being uh, much healthier and much better for it. So I agree. Thanks, thanks for having me on, gentlemen. Absolutely. And thank you in advance for a great open. Thank yep. you. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening in to Shop Talk Episode 6. We appreciate all of our listeners and would love for you to leave us a review wherever you listen in. Be sure to join us next month as we talk to Ivan Gilreath, President and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Scottsdale. And remember, if you're headed to the greatest show on grass, there will be a couple hundred thousand people out there. Be patient and have fun.